Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Aberdeen Harbour, on the northeast coast of Scotland. One of Britain's oldest businesses. It's just like a conveyor belt, you can just never stop. <laughs> and one of Europe's most modern ports. You've got clears to sail now. This is a glimpse into a hidden world. On our way, he's under the bell now. Of the men and women who keep the harbour running. It's fitting we call a typical woman. <laughs> I'm a poor defenceless female, so watch it. 24 hours a day, things change like. It's getting on for a force 10 now. Hang fire on that bell. This is just madness. 365 days hey! a day. Goodbye, cruel world. Go ahead, just a wee green here. Jimmy! How are you, my friend? It has been my Cheers. pleasure. The harbour. The sheltered estuary of the River Dee has always been a natural harbour. 29, in position, come. More than 8,000 ships pass through its waters every year. And nearly all of them rely on the boatmen. Hey, slack! Whose job it is to tie and untie the vessels heading out to the North Sea. I've done it for 30 years now, so about another 30 years will I be too bad. When they're not on the quayside, they're in the boatman's bothy waiting for the next vessel to arrive. You know, I was at uh, MI before this. I was a male stud before that. <laughs> alcoholic before uh, Alcoholic <laughs> before that. On shift today are Alan Cowper and Norman Campbell, who've lived in the city all their lives. Oh, Jeremy Kyle. In front of you, in America. Oh, your mate, Springer. Oh, oh Jerry Springer's magic. I mean, I was a hill weekend to him. Jerry Springer was on the hill weekend long ago. Well, so no it was, they never went to the hill weekend. The offshore oil and gas industry accounts for 15% of Scotland's entire economy. And the harbour's crucial to its success. The main centre of activity for all its marine support operations. Out in the bay, is the Bibby Sapphire, a dive support vessel which services the region's oil rigs. And Hugh Jones, the ship's master, is looking forward to dry land. Yeah, it's nice to see good old Aberdeen every now and then. That's for sure. Two weeks out, back in, even if it is only for 12 hours. The underwater channel at the harbour's entrance is only 33 metres wide. And larger vessels have to be brought in by an experienced hand known as a pilot. Vessels are relatively big compared to the size of the harbour and getting bigger all the time. The pilot cutter heads out to open water. Maybe Sapphire pilots. Idle boat, Sapphire. Yes, good afternoon, sir. That's a pilot boat on its way out to you. Boarding a ship in conditions like these is always a challenge. They have a ladder hanging out over the side of the boat. Once we are alongside that, we'll try and jump from here onto the ladder. It's the most dangerous part of a pilot's job. Hey, Freddie, the pilot to the starboard side. It's not high tech, no. Same way they've done it the last 2,000 years, I suppose. He has to time it exactly so that he jumps onto the ladder at the top of the swell. If he miscalculates, he could fall back, be crushed by the boat, or plunge into the North Sea. But Finn Frockier Jensen's an old hand at this. Hi, uh, long time no see. Yeah, how are you? How are you doing, good man? Yeah. 
bit bumpy coming out there. Ah, a bit rough, like one. Well, you Scandinavians can <laughs> yeah, cope with exactly. it, can't you? <laughs> You'll be doing just doing yourself. Yeah. That's magic. And uh, the good part is it only takes 20 minutes to half an hour, so before I get fed up with me, I'm off again. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping a watchful eye on her approach is the Harvest Control Tower, or VTS as it's called. VTS, people suffer. That's fine, so you're clear to proceed. Just give us a call again as you approach the bottom of the river. Um, VTS, the goes, or Vessel Traffic really Services, coordinates nice. all activities within the harbour. Stay as you It takes between two and three years training to become a pilot. Uh, what we do know is uh, the local knowledge, if you can say it. so. Uh, anybody can read a chart, like, but uh, we know the currents and what to expect. <laughs> Master, he puts his faith in us. Uh. <laughs> As the ship progresses, there's a constant dialogue between the skipper, the pilot, and VTS. Uh, nice and slowly, there's one vessel coming across into uh, Victoria Dock. Just keep it coming, Captain. A 6,000 ton ship like the Bibi Sapphire can be tricky to maneuver especially if the port is full, as it is today. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, afternoon, lad. It's OK, uh, this is coming up to you now. We are just as, as soon as we're all by the berth, we'll stay off about 10, 15 metres. OK, and friends, standing by waiting. Well, it's a diving boat. It goes out and inspects the pipelines, inspects the rigs and things like that. I don't know too much about them, like, but as I say, my job's just tying them up. He's also an extra pair of eyes on the key side. Yes, Alan, that's correct. All the way up to the east end. OK, I'll go up to the east end and I'll give you a shout when your boat's clear to come in. Cheers, buddy. The ship's thrusters can turn through 360 degrees, so Hugh can push the boat in any direction he wants. All I'm doing is pushing on with the thrusters at each end of the ship now, straight onto the key side. Keeps it steady on the key. It helps if the boatmen are steady on their feet. Oh, what a just swing. Maybe it's that far alongside. Another one under the belt, and everybody happy. That's a good thing. As long as the, the harbour's busy and the boats are still coming in and out, it'll still be a job for me. I need to check and see if that looks okay. Make sure my boobs look okay for the night. This is mascara on the go, quick as you like. It's Halloween. And over in Torrey, Val Morrison is getting ready for work. Now, I wonder if that looks scary enough. Like Alan, she's an Aberdonian, born and bred. Look at that. <laughs> Valerie, you look phenomenal. Sex on legs. <laughs> Sex on legs, maybe. But a witch's hat in the gusty northeast is probably not the best choice of headwear. Val is just one of more than 11,000 people who keep the harbour running 24 hours a day. It's been my life for 20 years. And for the day I would turn it, was just, I just said to myself, oh, this is just for you. Val's the harbour's best known barmaid. during the First World War. You idiot. Over the years, Val's become a favourite with the sailors and has her own unique way of dealing with them. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Sweet cropper, you little sod. Work a cloak. Going to pay next week? No. Just to keep Val company, many of the pub's customers have dressed up too. I thought we'd make a little bit of an effort for, for young Val here. Well, I think she's a little gem, actually, but a bit of a rough diamond, I would say. She knows how to stop them in their tracks. I'm going home now. Do I phone Francis and tell her for your say and your fat get? Tell him. And ask for you. Her boss, Jill, also knows that it's Val's particular people skills that bring the customers back for more. Look at her! 
But Jill says she's got to keep me there till I'm 92. And she says, Valerie, God forgive you, never will, but if you ever die, I'm going to get you stuffed, put you in the corner of the bar. And when you come in, you shout, Oh, you little s***, where have you been? Whenever she's in dock, the Bibi Sapphire stocks up with supplies. There are around 95 crew members on board, and diver Terry Dearlove is one of them. While he's on board, this is where Terry will be living. This one's like the Hilton, this one. That one there is like travel lodge, and the one at the end is like B&B. Locked away in this sealed unit, the divers can be kept at just the right pressure to work at depths of up to 185 metres. I've seen much smaller ones than these. Oh, uh, yeah, it's been some terrible yeah. ones. This is like DFS showroom compared to some of them. <laughs> and when divers can spend up to 28 days living in such close proximity, it helps if they get on. You've got two types of saturation diving. You get saturation diving when you're in with another two guys and then as soon as you get out, you never want to see him again. Or you get the other type where you don't want to separate from him when you come out. Yeah. It's like that, isn't it? Come on then, let's go to bed. One person who always knows which ships are arriving and leaving is Val in the Crown and Anchor. We had Marcy. the Scandi bucking in. We had the Scandi master was doing here. We had the Scandi rona. I just came from the boats and the harbour all the time. It's just my life. The boats and the boat guys and the pub. It's my life. On the quayside, the Bibi Sapphire's ropes are untied and she heads out to the North Sea. sun rises over the harbour, it's another busy day for all those who work at the quayside. Are oh, you OK there? It's fine there, Rolf. Hey, so you're here. <laughs> for a frustrated sailor like Alan, this is as close as it gets to a life on the ocean wave. When I left school, I tried to go out to sea, but I failed my maths test. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why you needed maths. I can count like hell now, because ever since I started drinking and playing darts, I can count backwards, forwards, everywhere. The only person who's never been to sea, I suppose, you know, and loves the boats, like, you know. That's him away. Another happy customer. Rem Supplier, VTS. Good afternoon. VTS controller Barry Standerline spent 27 years at sea before he came to work at the harbour. In comparison to working on, on, on cargo ships, this is an absolute breeze. As well as the life aquatic, there's another thing Barry and Alan have in common. A competitive love affair with boats. Hey, you can let go of the spring. Alan. Quite afternoon. Until he comes on duty. OK, boys. As Barry takes pictures of boats, and I take pictures of boats, and it's like a busman's holiday, you can. Alan's on the docks all day handling boats, while Barry has a bird's eye view from the top of VTS. Proper ship. Little cargo boat, nice ship. They're the perfect jobs for boat spotters. Oh, like that bit of porn up for the last is here. Here's my pictures of boats, you see? Now there's a good looking ship. Now she that is a good looking boat. Wait a minute, here's a lassie naked, don't it? And a fine figure of a lady, yeah, very well proportioned. And the two of them can compare notes or trade insults Hello. over the intercom. Pervert. <laughs> Boat pervert. <laughs> well, and do you see enough boats at your work without having to look at them on the computer? Check what I did with you! <laughs> <laughs> There's a lull in his busy day, 
so Alan takes the opportunity to visit VTS and see who has photos of the most recent ships. Blue fighter, you got him? No, not yet. Oh! I got, oh. I got my Olympic, Olympic commander. You Olympic no, commander. No, oh. Olympic commander either. Oh, you're falling behind. No. Grumpy and Dot. No. Oh. It's 3-1 to Alan. Not but yet. Barry has other right. things on his mind. We can just see the uh, South River. A thick fog is creeping across the harbour and visibility has dropped to less than a quarter of a mile. I'm just not certain about the wisdom of going at the moment. Oh, it's taken the Bibi Sapphire 13 hours to reach the Janus FPU, or floating production unit, 175 miles out at sea. Saturation diver Terry Dearlove is getting ready for another day on the seabed. Terry getting coffee in bed. Yeah, for a change. <laughs> Once Terry has adapted to the pressure of working at depth, his body needs to maintain that pressure. So he lives in a pressurized chamber and breathes in a mix of helium and oxygen that makes him sound like Donald Duck. This is where we get changed here. Once they're kitted up, they make their way to a dive bell through a tunnel attached to the living chamber. Dave Marsh, or Swampy, is the dive controller in charge of operations. Roger that, and we have a seal. You can take out five, please. I don't normally have to think about this many things at one time. <laughs> right, I'm good to come up on the cylinders. Coming up. Swampy is also responsible for controlling the dive bell, which is slowly moved over an opening in the ship's hull. Now we'll trolley across the deck, go down through the moon pool to the working depth. Say when. OK, Bob, coming down. Hello, guys. On our way. He lowers the bell until it reaches a cradle at the bottom of the ocean, which is attached to the ship by guide wires. The guide wires basically guide the bell up and down. If, it, if there's no wires, it would just be swinging around the breeze and disaster. Getting close. Bridge 47, bell at depth. Before Terry can leave the bell, there's a rigorous process of safety checks. Check the diver's umbilical secure to the harness. Diver's bailout has been functioned, test is breathing from the panel. Bottle is on at the bottle, off at the hat, and the pressure is 280, Roger. OK, that's Terry there now. He's just going out the bell. He's under the bell now, in the water. OK, then. Good for leagues. Good for leagues, Terry. Finally, Terry can start work, installing a pipeline from an underwater well to the rig above it. It costs in excess of £100,000 per day to charter a ship like the Bibi Sapphire. The entire vessel, with its 95-strong crew, exists for one reason only, to support Terry and his buddy. It's another day at the Crown and Anchor, where Val's discovered a softer side to the sailors she serves. Look in that harbour, we've got hundreds of guys. It gives me a lot of respect, really. And, but as they say, well, Val, you give us respect because you look after us. One of her regulars is Lee Pooley, a 25-year-old deckhand. They always know about it. You get your crown and care, they say, Val. Well, darling, I'm everybody's mother in here, I think. Have I never challenged you at pool, my darling? Well, I feel a challenge coming on here. Lee is such a lovely guy. He turned around and says to me that I was the mother that he never had. Two shots. 
next to me, sort of. You know what? Some mum's here, didn't she? Give her a little bit. Get after the flame is shot. Move. But for Val, it's not really about winning. Kiss play pool, because he's a cheating little Right. When you're a barmaid, you have to be a wife, a mother, a sister, an agony aunt and nothing. Yeah, right, Lee. But Lee isn't all right. He's due back at work in 40 minutes. And he shouldn't be drinking. He's in watch, you said. You're in watch, you're sex. I know, I've just told him he's a while back. He's going to have a back. Can I get off when you go back? Oh, you're gone, I know. Okay, Terry, I'm going to hand you the rub now. You've been very semi professional all the way. Yeah. On the Bibby Sapphire, it's crew change time. And Rob Jones has joined at a critical juncture. They're about to lower a work basket of tools down to the divers. And where they put it, is crucial. No, that's fine, mate. Take your time, because we, we need to obviously get this right. The nearer to the job, the better. Yeah, Dave Control, that's the main crane changed over to the line, and it's ready to overboard. But not so close that they injure the divers or damage the wellhead. Hey, coming down all the time, Terry. It's Rob's job to coordinate the whole process. You've got a visual on that. As the basket's lowered, Terry's responsible for making sure it's positioned correctly. Okay, you want me to put that moving, Sal? Roger. Port Dave Bridge. Five metres ahead, Bridge, you're clear to move. Five ahead. Dave Bridge, vessel on the move. On the move, guys. In the crane, down easy. Just watch your umbilicals, guys. We don't want to obviously lay this on top of anybody's umbilical. The umbilical is the diver's lifeline. It connects them to the ship and supplies the gas they're breathing. The main thing that we have to worry about is we've got two guys on the seabed. Um, another thing we do, I would like to think, is, is, is geared up um, for them. The divers, the crane and the work basket are constantly monitored. The supervisor can put the crane down and it can be like, 15 metres out the way when it's high. Mm. No, it's a free of the war. Mission accomplished. Crane is all stopped. Vessel move, stop, please. All is stopped. Vessel move complete. Vessel move is complete, guys. OK, nice one, fellas. Getting them working on the building site. Lee's still in the crown and anchor and struggling to tear himself away. I've told them, I've just finished telling them he's on shift at six o'clock. Back in the boat. Get your butt in here, get a bag, get back that boat. Back, darling. He's a little lad. Good night, all. See you later, see you later on. There's a zero tolerance policy on drinking. Something Lee should already know. You have to be there for them because then they've got their bills. There's a lot of lonely people. A lot. Sea fog, or har, as it's known in the northeast, is an occupational hazard for those that work at the harbour. Visibility, I'd estimate, is about half a mile from our station. It happens when a parcel of warm air passes over the notoriously cold oh, no, North okay, Sea. Right. Answer, Fog plays tricks on people and you don't really know what they're going to do. People do strange things in fog, probably things that they wouldn't do otherwise, you know, when they can see something. Even VTS is helpless if they can't see what's going on. I hate fog. I hated fog when I was at sea. I don't like it anymore now. At home, after another shift, Val's had news of Lee, and it's not good. He never went on his shift, and he actually got the sack. I just think he's, 
he needs, he just needs somebody there to give him, to show him a bit of love, I think. I just like to show him it when, I'm, when he's here in the pub with us. Hearing about Lee makes Val reflect on her relationship with her own son. Me and my son kind of parted ways for a while. Uh, a lot of things, fault on both sides, not just his, mine as well. I was standing at Max and Spencer's and this old neighbour that I used to hear for North Anderson Drive come up and she says to me, oh, I thought you were dead. Your son said you were dead. And I said, pardon? I says, as you can see, I'm very much alive. And that really, really hurt. And I thought, oh, my God, does my son really think of that of me? <laughs> Maybe that's why I mother all the guys that come out the boats now. Because <laughs> I cry my mother and I say I'm mothering, but me and my son are sorted In the icy depths of the North Sea, Terry's approaching the end of his dive. He's worked without a break since he left the dive bell, and he hasn't eaten since breakfast. But there's only one thing on his mind. X Factor, X Factor, X Factor. X Factor, yeah, I'll get you back for that, Terry. Oh, certainly not, isn't it? And we have a slight improvement um, in visibility from our station here. As quickly as the fog arrives, it lifts. That's fine. You have traffic clearance inwards following the Maersk forwarder. Beautiful evening there. His buddy pulls Terry back into the dive bell, which returns to the ship. And when a diver's social life is so restricted, it's the little things that matter. I've just been through and spoke to the chef. Um, he's fine with the steaks, omelettes, eggs. Um, he's a little bit confused if you want beans and chips with it or a jacket potato or ch chips and beans. Is that okay? Installing the pipeline is a non-stop 24-hour operation. There are four sets of divers on the Bibi Sapphire, each working a six-hour shift. And then when they come in here, we go in there. And then it all starts again tomorrow. Yeah, if you can put the stern of the workstation clear of the diver. The oil industry pumps out 3.2 million barrels of oil a day. The Bibi Sapphire is an essential part of that process. Nice, easy, Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Scary thing looming up in the darkness. Almost another day over. Another day in paradise. <laughs> Coming up next week, a storm lashes the harbour. Whatever you do, this weather, don't mess about. And saturation diver Terry makes a startling observation. 